Okay, Mike Masato, CEO of Staff Driven Dental and the Dental Road Warrior, returning for episode 82 in the series. So uh, wherever you are and you're watching this right now, uh, it's late April, we're looking at May, and um, probably uh, you're neck deep in it and uh, not getting any answers in terms of this uh, whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we're all up against. And it's been a terrible situation. Everyone's taking a hit. We're all going through it. Difficult and challenging times. We don't know where to turn, what to do, you know, where to go, when to start, the whole thing. And the easy thing right now to do is to forget our purpose and buy into the doom and gloom and just kind of shut it down until further notice. And uh, I was on a call uh, last Wednesday with my clients and I went on this rant and rave uh, about my feelings in the whole thing. And I'm gonna do it again now uh, for everyone else who may have missed it. And this is also for a refresher of any of my clients that may have seen this. Uh, but I'm having a difficult time comprehending what we're so tortured about at this stage of the game, right? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, May, someday in May, is what you should be planning on right now to get back in the game on some level to start treating your patients. Why do I say this? Do I say this that I want you to be reckless? Do I say this because I want you to be unsafe and take risks with your staff and yourself and your patients? Not at all, right? But when I have to hear that, like the other day, there was petitions going around uh, that I was asked to sign that the ADA uh, uh, you know, needs to promote COVID-19 testing in dental offices. I mean, that's ludicrous to me. These, these organizations that are supposed to have our back are supposed to be doing this anyway on our behalf. So you can forget them. We have to get a petition out to do this. They're not pushing this any harder on our behalf to get out there. Because all I hear everywhere I go is that how, you know, only essential businesses need to be open. We do the bare business minimum. I mean, when did healthcare become non-essential? Especially the healthcare that we deliver. You know, we, can, we cannot create situations where we are putting our patients at risk. You know, last week I, I talked about on our call about the, the dental Hippocratic Oath. Let's remember the oath, the oath we took about doing no harm, doing no intentional harm. We're not doing intentional harm by going back into our practices in a safe, taking all precautions. And we're even teaching all the OSHA guidelines right now, things we should have been following all along, you know, and staying in line with everything we're supposed to be doing to make things safe. Yes, is it going to be different than before? Absolutely, it has to be. You know, it'll be the new normal for a while. But nowhere does it say anywhere. I have doctors telling me, well, the CDC said. The CDC did not say you have to shut down your entire office. You can see emergency patients. And I have many clients seeing emergency patients right now. And thank God that they are. Because they would have been hospital cases that would have went to a hospital, which would have, which would have put more, t more stress on the healthcare system. And it also exposed these patients to risk by going to a hospital. So these doctors that are out there, uh, that this is what they signed up for. Yeah, when they got a, when they got a, a license to become a, a dentist, they didn't say uh, only on the best of conditions when it's safe and 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 uh, you know when the government says it's okay, etc. No, they took an oath to to take care and treat patients. That's what you need to do, you know. And you should be upset and and see it's a little a little problem when liquor stores are considered essential and pet shops and pot shops, pot shops of all things are also essential and gun stores because we got to have our guns, of course, during a pandemic. You know, to fight off all the zombie attacks. You know, this is the insanity of what's going on right now that we are buying into the fact that somehow dentistry is not essential. There is plenty of dentistry, which is up to your own decision that to make the determinations. That's what they say, whether or not it should be done, right? I'm not saying you should call people into your office and do whiting. I'm not saying you should have people call, you know, come in there and they have to get their veneers run done right now, all right? Or even hygiene should be done on a limited scale, uh, uh, spread it over time safely. But Let's remember what we're all about, right? These patients that are out there would have problems in the mouth, have disease processed. There is disease of the mouth. That's what you're treating. And did you ever see a person that had disease of the mouth that didn't have problems with the rest of their body? See, this is the problem. You know, for the most, for the most part, people are sick, you know, and it lowers their immune system, right? And if they're having a compromised immune system because we're not taking care of them, that's also increasing the risk of them catching this, this virus. See, so we need to remember what we signed up to do. We have a purpose. We need to get in there, you know, and start seeing people, right? We need to be unreasonable about what's going on right now. I'm not saying irrational. I'm not saying risky. I'm not saying stupid. I'm saying you're unreasonable, right? Getting, not going into agreement with what's happening out there right now, right? And, and coming up with a plan that makes sense for you, that works best for you and your patients and your team to get back in the game. 
I'm not saying all at once. I'm not saying, you know, just open, open, open doors and floods gates come in. But I can't tell you, you know, how many doctors uh, are, are getting phone calls uh, from patients and the doctors won't see them or they won't go in under any circumstances or under the most dire circumstances. You know, I have patients calling up, you know, the office and the office is asking for hygiene appointments and they want to come in for hygiene appointments even now on these times, right? And, and you cannot tell me that if, unless you have COVID, Okay, or your, your staff does, that you cannot create the most sterile environment possible and safe environment possible that's any less sterile and safe than going out into public and going to a grocery store or going to a liquor store, okay, or going to a pot shop or a gun shop and all these essential businesses that are supposed to be open right now. You know, you cannot tell me that. And we, we're teaching these on our phone calls right now of all that we have OSHA experts talking about. This is, and many of this stuff is stuff we should have been doing all along that we should have been compliant on, that we relax about. Now it's a wake-up call now more than ever that we should provide better safety and better infection control for yourself and your patients because we could have caught anything else back then too, but we just it wasn't hyper-magnified like it is right now. So now more than ever, we have to be conscientious of creating that environment of safety right, in our, in our practice. So that's what we have to do and go back and do. And there are plenty of things you can do which will lower the risk to virtually nothing. If, if you're doing this properly. And of course, we're not gonna invite sick patients into our practice, or, you know, that, that, that's also part of it as well. We're providing guidelines and guidance for our patients as well too. This is the kind of stuff that we teach, you know, but it all goes back to, if, you know, you, only, you, you, you listen to this doom and gloom long enough, you know, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then what's gonna happen when we get the, the all clear, which it's not just gonna all blow out the sea one day, let's, let's be realistic. You know, two, three, four weeks from now, there are going to still be plenty of COVID around. It's going to be around. They even said that this is going to be coming back in the fall. So what are you going to do then? Shut the practice down again and not see patients again until it blows out again, blows over again? No. All we can do is be as safe as possible. Take every precaution as possible. Let your purpose, your passion for healthcare and treating patients guide you. This takes is, is more important than anything else. More important than anything else. Because at this, every day that goes by, the health of your patients is being sacrificed. It's being compromised. You are losing patients. Patients that will go someplace else, potentially to a doctor who maybe is more on purpose, you know, is more committed. You know, these other healthcare workers and the other fields that have to go to work and literally have to work in the face of COVID patients every day, they don't have a choice. Right? They have to go into work and do that. Right? Thankfully, you do. You have a much more controlled environment that you can create to make it be safe for yourself and your patients to do, right? While taking care of them like they need to be taken care of, right? It's time to find that within yourself, come up with a plan, get support, right? Come together with your team, okay? And get back in the game, okay? Come May, some point in May, wherever you may be, right? Now, and I don't think that they're gonna have the dental police go around the office and say, hey, you shouldn't be seeing patients, right? Go into, come into your practice. If you tell them, well, if you determine this person needed care and it's an emergency situation and this couldn't wait and it was necessary care by your decision, what are they going to tell you? No? This is how insurance companies work. Doesn't that infuriate you all the time when an insurance company, you submit a need for care to get treatment and they reject it and say they don't need the care? What the hell do they know? What changed? Now the government knows? They know better? They know better what patients you should be seeing or not be seeing? Come on. right? They don't. You do. You know what's best for yourself and for your patients. And if you let fear dictate you in this situation and doubt and all this uncertainty going on right now and misinformation, right, that's out there or information, whatever it is you're hearing all the time. But again, we don't get we don't get here all the good stuff. We all hear the gloom and gloom that's going on all day. We don't hear about the hundreds of thousands of people that are getting it and recovering and doing well, you know, that are out there, right? And it does happen. And this is unfortunate times. These are tragic times, not to minimize these things. But let's not compound the situation, right, by forgetting what we're all about and what we're here to do, which is to treat and take care and serve our patients, right? And if they can be done in other parts of the country, and I don't know where you, where you are listening to this, they can be done here in this market, in the New York metropolitan area. And it can be done. It just has to be done in a different way, in a, in a more effective and safe way that makes sense for bringing people back, all right? So 
I want you to get where this is coming from. This is coming from my heart, right? Because I care. I care about you that are listening to this, you know, who may be, you know, every day watching your livelihood go down the tubes for all the years of work and energy you put in to get your practice where you where it is. For all your patients that are out there right now that are suffering, you know, that are, that are that are, are their health is being compromised. This is not a matter of necessarily a matter of life and death, but it could be. It could be if we send these patients out into emergency situations, into hospitals and clinics, right? And then they are literally branch potentially taking their lives in their hands. Don't be part of the problem. Be part of the solution, right? And that's what I'm all I'm saying right now. All right. So I hope this came from the right place. I hope you hear me on this. Take it to heart. Remember, purpose is senior to everything else. It's primary to everything else. It's not just something to talk about and say and and. Uh, you know, and think about it's something to live and be every day of your life. All right. I appreciate you listening to these videos. Wherever you are watching these videos, be safe, be well, but get back on purpose. Get back in the game. Take care of your patients. Make smart decisions. And we're all going to get through this and be better because of it. Thanks for watching.